In retrospect, most rumors seem absurd. There was and is no end to schoolyard rumors. Anyone who was once a child probably knows the whole pantheon of toilet talk. It feels like the internet has turned any and every piece of information into one of these stories. Still, everyone has a few favorites. Ones they remember. No matter how silly or absurd. Unlike symbols drawn in chalk, there does seem to be a childish history behind these limericks. That does not mean they make sense though. They are all pretty ribald. Rib. Rib removal is a personal favorite due to popularity alone. According to every secondary school, some celebrity or the other got one or a few of their ribs surgically removed, either for aesthetic or... Eh, personal reasons. It never happened, sort of, but kids and even adults love to repeat it as if it did. Why though? Beyond basic gossip, there is an established nature to all these tall tales. A sort of body sexual psychosis about public figures is not actually new, nor is it entirely fact or fictional. An interest in ribs or autofellatio is just its most recent form. It is a story of schoolyard tradition that goes back beyond the tabloids and into mythology. So what's the story and what's the skinny? One of the main misconceptions about the long mythologized rib removal superstition is how many ribs humans have and what constitutes removing a rib. Despite popular lore, males and females have the same number of ribs. 12. Not 11 or 13. No, Adam may have lost a rib, but all humans share the common 12, barring defect. The top 7 are considered true ribs, those that are attached directly to the sternum and what people think of when they think ribs. The next three are considered false ribs. These attach to the sternum not through bone, but through cartilage. The bottom two, these puny things, are the floating ribs, and have no attachment to the frontal rib cage. Because of their size and location, most often forget these. So that is why some may think men or women lack them. Now, they are the least necessary ribs, but you are still born with them all. As is obvious though, ribs are still very important bodily structures of bone and cartilage. Not only are the areas around them soft tissue, but they, as is obvious, surround the body's major organs. Any damaged rib is in danger of puncturing a vital part of the body, and especially the lungs. That is the reason why very few doctors will agree to remove them. Not only are the ribs obviously important, they are not like an appendix. Very few doctors have ever performed the procedure. Until extremely recently, it was thought to be actually impossible. I say recently because around the late 2000s, surgeons began to think the process was theoretically possible. Theoretically, that is. Not breakening or shortening ribs, but outright removal. Rib removal sometimes means both. Still dangerous, though, in either way. It was not until 2011 the first full procedure was actually performed though, the first confirmed occurrence that is. Rumors have abounded for years that shadowy doctors in South America have been doing the surgery under wraps for a quick buck, though, if true, none have ever come forward. The first well-known and publicized case was Pixie Fox in 2015, who, according to the public, is known as the Living Cartoon. She, uh, lives up to the name. Fox actually had three pairs of ribs removed to tighten her waist, as to accentuate that Jessica Rabbit look. The surgeon removed the four floating ribs and the pair of false ribs directly above them. Fox then is probably the only current known human with only nine pairs of ribs. Not that she really recommends it. Any discerning viewer, which I assume you are if you're watching a video about people getting ribs removed to suck their may notice this all occurred over the past decade. So pretty recently. One has to remember aesthetic surgery is a very recent development. On a historical scale, things like plastic surgery did not really exist, only starting in the 1960s and 1970s when vanity became in vogue. Before then, you were usually a burn victim if you underwent the scalpel. The topic of rib removal then, as a perceived aesthetic surgery, actually predates the modern concept of appearance slash plastic surgery. It stretches back to even before the concept of modern surgery in the early 1900s, back into the 1800s when surgery was something that almost always killed the patient. I have turned up medical gazettes from the 1820s theorizing about the possibility of it, in the London Medical Gazette or Journal of Practical Medicine, Volume 2, from 1828, there is an article titled On the Removal of the Ribs by Dr. L. or I. Chidiadini. Chidiadini discusses a few cases where parts of the rib were removed, such as removing growths from a woman's ribs, dislodging a knife stuck in a man's rib bone, or taking a tumor from the rib cartilage. Granted, Chidiadini was talking about surface level surgeries and scraping on the frontal portions of the rib cage, but it is the same concept. He outright states operating on the back portions of the ribs were as dangerous though, so it was not Shididini who attempted outright removal. Back, 
even in 1828, the idea was in the air. With the rumors, though, come masculine and feminine connotations. Female celebrities are a common topic for purely aesthetic suspicions. Starlets and songstresses have been snickered about back since the 50s and 60s, it seems. Everyone from Marilyn Monroe to Britney Spears. Lists of the accused often read something like this. Cher, Elizabeth Taylor, Jane Fonda, Kim Kardashian, Janet Jackson, Kate Moss, etc, etc. With the expansion of media in the last 50 years, it has become far more common to hear about. Cher, if you can believe in life after love, is actually the most interesting case out of the couple. She sued the magazine Paris Match for slander in 1988. As the magazine published a claim, she had two pairs of ribs removed. Cher even hired the British physician, F.V. Nicole, in 1990 to inspect her body for definite proof she did not. As is obvious, she did not, and Cher won the lawsuit. This was the problem, though. Paris Match was forced to retract the story and claim. It did not help. The story had already captured the public imagination by the 90s. A variety of the Streisand effect followed. The Cher effect? Other papers and magazines began to repeat the statement without proof and applied it to other people. The lascivious information was already in circulation, so Cher's lawsuit made it worse. But in all fairness to her, she has all her ribs. Just ask F.V. Nicole. She just accidentally spread the story about it. Another famous singer to be connected to the obscure operation is the country singer Dolly Parton. Now, Dolly Parton has had a lot of surgery and a lot of wigs, both of which she is very open about, but rib removal is not one of them. Though, due to her personality and public image, she takes the superstition in jest. She's famous for other reasons as well, as she said, No, my waist is little because nothing grows in the shade. Not to say the rumor is limited to female celebrities. No, just like drugs and abuses of power, weird rumors are known to both genders. Granted, when applied to male celebrities, the tale actually takes far more sexual undertones. Usually androgynous rock stars and musicians who have a reputation for... pleasuring themselves. Marilyn Manson, Prince, Mark Almond, Steven Tyler, David Bowie, etc. All rock stars named and associated with the habit and mouthful. Manson is the most claimed person. One, because he has a million other rumors about him. Two, because it is Marilyn Manson. And three, he actually addressed the accusation in... colorful terms? Manson's entire shtick is getting a rise or reaction out of people, but thanks, Keith. Manson's rib is one of the older varieties of the story, a sort of Sisyphean precursor. It probably dates to December 27th, 1994, when Manson was arrested for violating the adult entertainment code due to the belief he had used his own mouth on someone else's masculine, erogenous zone on stage. He was held for 16 hours before it turned out it was just a plastic simulacrum. The 90s really were the wonder years. Speaking of wonder, Prince, being another androgynous, sexually abstract idol, obviously had the same apply to him. Granted, Prince was definitely out there, let's not forget the symbol name saga, but his inner life was a lot less open to the public, so he had a lot of rumors circulating. People on the Prince fan forums mentioned hearing the rib rumor being applied to Prince all the way back in 88, as that was the year of the artist formerly known as his peak popularity, which is the earliest exact year linked with the tale that has a statement about it, so 30 plus years old by this point. Now, there are no shortage of crazy myths about rock stars and celebrities in general. Very few of them I can actually mention on YouTube, though. So, for those with weak stomachs, here are the work-safe versions of them. The one about getting a stomach pumped for gallons of, uh, milk. White substance. The one about a rocker using a pleasure massager on themselves during a show. And the one about Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off- Wait, that one is real. But the one about getting a rib removed is so bizarrely universal, it crosses all types of barriers in the English-speaking world. It is no surprise then that the personages connected to the supposed escapades are usually androgynous, sexually loose rock stars. Prince, Manson, Bowie, et al. were showmen with notorious personal lives. Some more than others. Plus, when you're a kid, you think everyone famous is up to something weird. Which they are, it's just not getting down and dirty with themselves. They have money and cocaine for that. There's a sort of modern mythology to it then. A constant story where the persons and times shift, but the main ideas remain. A tale to bring up around friends and family. Nobody explicitly believes it, but likes to repeat it. But applied to rock stars makes it seem like a recent invention. It's not, actually. Nobody knows its exact origin, but it's probably pretty old. Like the Eternal Champion, there appears to be an eternal rib removal suspect. There's at least one per generation. Currently, it appears to be Kim Kardashian according to chain emails. 
but it dates back further. The earliest case in regards to a person of note appears to be Anna Held, an early 1900s Polish starlet, but varieties of it go as far back as the Victorian era. It is a sort of heirloom rumor then, one that is passed down from generation to generation, as it is always applicable to someone, no matter how untrue it is. Female celebrities for appearance, and male celebrities for their sexual proclivities. Even the masculine lineage of the rumor dates back to far older superstitions about male rulers and monarchs. As far back as ancient Rome, Roman emperors had all sorts of hearsay circulating about them, Caligula and Nero being the two most common. Many of their supposed exploits of decadent violence and sexual indulgence became historical fact. Of course, one cannot know for sure what was original to them and what was… orgies. Even Augustus had a proliferation of supposed truths circulate about him, his relation with his granduncle Caesar, the questionable chastity of his family, and his own carnal desires in private. Granted, none of them had their ribs removed, supposedly. The actual rib removal aspect to these snippets dates back to the 1900s in the hands of a promoter named Florin Ziegfeld Jr., most famous for his production of the Ziegfeld Follies, an accurate name. Now, Ziegfeld did not get his rib removed, but he talked a big game about his clients, especially the Polish-French singer Anna Held. Ziegfeld liked to promote Held on Broadway by leaking questionable stories to the press. One of these may have been she had a rib removed to achieve her figure. It has never been confirmed if Ziegfeld was the one to invent or even first employ the rib or lie, but it seems likely. He fits the bill of the person who would create it. He enjoyed selling absurd stories to the 1900s press who put the selling stories into overdrive circulation. It gave the papers a juicy story, it improved his client's renown, and it made Ziegfeld a pretty penny through increased attendance at shows. It could have very well been Ziegfeld who brought the rib removal story from just an anonymous rumor to the tabloids, but as he leaked stories under the table, nobody is sure. If the legend originated with Ziegfeld and Held, it would explain how the bizarre rumor came to be most associated with celebrities. If it was spread about Held on Broadway, then it could have been transmitted to Hollywood, either through misapplication or other promoters looking to popularize their own clients. While we do not know if Ziegfeld was the first to rightfully claim the rumor, it is believed he got the idea from Victorian gazettes, as during the Victorian period, it was rumored richer English women had their ribs removed to fit into tighter corsets. Once again, there is little fact to support this claim. Ziegfeld could have easily learned about it by looking at magazines, though. The urban legend was repeated all across printed media, all without proof. If anything, these stories were always more fictional. There is no documentation, medical reports, or even verifiable anecdotes about such surgeries being performed in the Victorian age. The multitude of these claims actually come from fiction and fetish magazines of the era, pulp fiction that people misinterpreted as actual reality, or just a basis for it. Not to mention in the 1800s, such an invasive surgery would have been nearly impossible, if not outright deadly. It was possible to remove parts of the rib, removing an entire one without antiseptic, antisepsis, and modern technology would be fatal for one reason or another though. So the whole old wives tale turned recess rumor comes from 1800s pulp fiction. Eh, probably. But as said, spicy tales of misconduct and impropriety are much older. The three most common, pre-modern ones being rib removal, self-pleasure, and hermaphroditism. Hermaphroditism seems to have been the American parallel to the British corset myth which spawned the rib rumor. That and the claims an individual is a hermaphrodite have been enshrined in American slander law. The case, by the dancing mistress hermaphrodite, according to Folkard Starkey on slander and libel from 1877, Henry Coleman Folkard writes, where the defendant said of the plaintiff, who taught girls to dance, that she was an hermaphrodite, it was held that the words were not actionable, and to be no slander to her profession to impute that she was a hermaphrodite, because men usually teach young women to dance. Hermaphrodite slander in the United States actually goes back even to the election of 1800, where Thomas Jefferson's journalist attack dog, James Callender, declared about John Adams, without regard to that hideous hermaphroditical character, which has neither the force and firmness of a man, nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman, in the pamphlet The Prospect Before a political attack about Adams' character that, at some point, was misconstrued to Jefferson actually saying Adams was a hermaphrodite. Like all the other rumors, it never happened. Callender did turn on Jefferson, though, after he refused to make him the postmaster of Virginia. That's life! Not to say it has always been all slander and superstition. The metaphysical poets of the 16th century hailed Queen Elizabeth I as the blessed hermaphrodite, in more positive terms, for her ability to rule as a masculine king. The most famous being John Doan at the end of his poem, To Mr. Tillman After He Had Taken Orders, as it goes, And make thee now a blessed hermaphrodite. The whole root of ribs may actually be religious. It goes back to the Bible. If one wants to be literal, rib removal does first appear in the Bible. In the secondary creation myth of man from Genesis, Eve is made when God removes one of Adam's ribs. Maybe. 
The exact body part or bone is hard to translate, but by King James, it is his rib, so sounds a bit familiar. Adam then was the first one to ever be known as the guy who got his rib removed. That brings us all the way back around to why some people think men have less ribs than women. They do not. Sins of the father are not ribs ever lost. Remember that. From Adam and Eve to the play yard and prattle, I guess humans have barely developed beyond antiquated gossip inherited from mythology and religion. Ribs and rumors were literally learned from the tree of knowledge.